My name is Tony Piascovi, and I am uh, Cadastra's Global Program Director, um, which means that I um, oversee and I support all of our field-based uh, trainers and um, program specialists and consultants who are working with our partners around the world, um, specifically um, supporting and cultivating our ability to conduct training and provide technical support to our partners, uh, which is why I'm so pleased to um, that we announced two weeks ago and that we're presenting here today our new training and support center website um, that is a resource um, for um, for Cadasta partners. Um, we are ready for our first poll question. Um, so let me um, launch the poll. We'll give you about 30 seconds to uh, respond. This is a simple one. We're just asking, um, uh, trying to get a gauge on who's participating in this webinar. Um, do we have an audience full of current Cadasta partners or do we have a lot of new people um, uh, in our midst? And I see the responses coming in, so. Um, give maybe about 10 more seconds. Get those last responses in. All right. Any last stragglers closing the poll in three, two, one. Okay, and let's share the results. So um, we asked you, are you a current Canasta partner? Um, and of the, I think, 16 people that we got answers from, 44%, um, seven of you said, yes, you are a current Canasta partner. And 56%, so nine of you, uh, said, no, you're not a current Canasta partner. So. Um, that is very helpful for me to know. Um, we will launch into, I'll stop sharing this poll. Thank you for participating. Um, I, will, um, I will launch into a little bit of um, overview of Cadasta since we have so many who are not Cadasta partners. Um, hopefully, um, you're participating in this today's webinar because if you're not a partner, because you're curious or you've heard about our work in the land rights sector and you are curious about um, what we do, how we do it and, and where we're doing it. And so um, very quickly, um, Cadasta is an organization, it's a non-governmental non organization, NGO, nonprofit, and we, um, our mission is really centered in securing land rights for uh, the world's most vulnerable um, and, uh, populations, both individuals and communities. Um, and so our mission, we're driven to um, improve the security of, um, of individuals and communities' um, land rights. And we do that, so our, our, we do that by way of providing uh, technology solutions to our, um, to our partners um, who are communities and groups of individuals. Um, and we use mapping technology, GPS um, and, and GIS, um, uh, Geographic Information System uh, uh, technology, both in the form of um, uh, mobile applications on smartphones and tablets, and then also um, web-based um, web technologies, which you just go to your internet browser and type in a website and, and you access the service that way. Um, but we, we offer um, innovative um, uh, mapping and, um, and GPS capture um, tools so that we can uh, begin to, or we can support communities and individuals to document, um, collect, store and analyze information about land rights. Um, and like I said, we do that through technologies primarily on uh, mobile phones um, and smart, uh, smartphones, tablets, 
and then also um, through uh, through the internet on uh, via web pages. The platform itself is um, is a is a geographic information system tool. It's it's provided by the company es Esri or ESRI, um, which is one of the world's leading um, uh, geographic information system solutions and uh, technologies. And uh, you access it through uh, mobile phones and your web browser. And just a little bit about where Cadasta is currently working, so you have an idea of our uh, impact and our reach. Uh, we are currently in 32 countries, working with, uh, with partners in 32 countries. Um, that's a total of about 64 partners. Um, so um, on average, you know, more than one partner per country. And also um, more than one project uh, per partner. You'll see in our, in our impact dashboard here that we have 70 active projects right now in these 32 countries with these 64 partners. Um, What's represented here at the top, so you've got an aggregate number of the, um, the households that, um, for which we are storing data on our platform and the number of people that that represent. So uh, we have more than 2.5 million people whose land rights um, are represented uh, or captured in our, um, in our database. Um, and I would also uh, point out that uh, this screen that you're looking at right now is, um, was developed using our technology tool. So if you like this kind of map and these kind of data points, um, this is exactly the type of technology solution that you gain access to um, when, you become, um, when you become a Cadasta partner. Um, uh, okay. And, uh, and with that, I'm going to um, uh, switch gears a little bit and, and, switch and move over to the, um, to the website, which is our primary feature of today. Um, I do just want to um, make one caveat or give one um, additional um, answer or uh, give one note is that uh, if you're not currently a partner um, and you sit through today's webinar and you like the things that you see and you think that there may be opportunities for your organization um, or your community to work with Cadasta, um, we do have a partnership process that um, is required uh, to, uh, to, to be initiated in order to partner with us. And so I believe my colleague Madeline um, who uh, is my co-facilitator here today, is going to put up a link in the chat. Yep, see, I just see that she has posted, uh, she has posted it. A link to our website that explains the partnership process for those who are curious about um, uh, how to become a Cadasta partner if after today you really like what you see and uh, you want to engage in a partnership conversation with us. So with that, I will exit out of this PowerPoint and I'm going to go to, um, we're gonna talk about the website. So the new Training and Support Center website um, was designed as a response to our current partners saying that they wanted um, a, a, a place that they could go to for answers and support after we did in-person training with them. Um, and so, we launched our training and support center website two weeks ago. Um, and we're going to walk through today all of the features and point out some of the specific things that, um, that we think are exciting and that you'll want to know about. Um, again, the primary audience for this new website is for our current Cadasta partners. Um, and you'll begin to see when I walk through the different contents um, 
uh, why the, the primary audience is, is, um, is our current partner and uh, platform users. Um, but it is really great that we have so many uh, people who are not our partners and you're gaining exposure to some of the tools and resources that we provide if you are to become our partner. So, so maybe after seeing this today, you are um, a bit more confident or you um, are really excited about um, uh, partnership opportunities with Cadasta because of what you can, um, what you can gain access to here. Um, I will say that the website is, um, is, is free and um, there are no restrictions on a majority of the, um, or access restrictions on a majority of the content. Um, so anyone can come in and, um, and look at the set of resources that, that we have here. Um, first and foremost, how to get to the site, how to find it. Um, so there are four ways. The first way is um, simply just typing in the URL, the website address, help org. You see, that's what I've typed right here in the top of my, um, uh, my internet window, help.cadasta.org. That is one of the simplest ways to, um, to get to the website. The second way is Google. Um, <laughs> Maybe I don't, I, I, help.cadasta.org is something I can't remember, but I know that I'm searching for the Cadasta Training Center, the Cadasta Support Center. So I come to Google and I type in Cadasta Support Center, and you'll see uh, the, first, uh, the first two options are actually press releases about the, about the website. It's still so new, the indexing is, is, is uh, is not as uh, good as uh, we'd like it, but the, the third option here is the Cadasta online training and support, um, help.cadasta.org right here. So also if you were to click on the press release, obviously you could click on the press release and you could scroll down and you would see the link to the training and support center in the press release text. Uh, so that's a second way to get to it. A third way to get to it is if you already know Cadasta's website, which is cadasta.org, you can uh, navigate to the, um, to the new training and support center from Cadasta's website. Um, so it is under the resources section of our main website under the heading Training and Support Center. So I go to cadasta.org, Resources, Training and Support Center, and I am brought back to the new website. And then finally, uh, and I won't show this on the screen actually, because I, um, I don't want to um, use my login credentials, but you can access this Training and Support Center if you are logged into Cadasta's platform. Um, so current users, when you log into the online platform environment, when you're using a web browser, you, um, you can navigate to the training and support center. There's a very clear button in the middle of the screen uh, once you log into the, um, the Cadasta platform online website. So those are the four ways that you can access the website. Um, I would recommend if you're a current partner or you're um, considering partnership and you want to be able to easily refer back to this, I would recommend bookmarking the website. Just click, a, click the star or uh, however you uh, enable bookmarks in your web browser and save it as a bookmark so that you can always come back to it. Um, I just added it to my favorites right now. Okay. Um, so this is the homepage of uh, the Training and Support Center website. And I wanna point out some things um, right from the beginning um, that you may not have noticed. So up in this top right corner, we have um, uh, next to the magnifying glass, which is the search capability, is a language drop-down menu. And when I click on the language drop-down menu, I've got choices in, uh, the default is English, but I have choices in 
uh, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Hindi, um, Bahasa, Indonesian, and Kiswahili. Um, note, or, or please note that, um, that these translations or these translated um, website pages are, in, uh, are being done by, um, excuse me, are being done uh, by Google Translate. So it's not an exact uh, science, um, but it is a close approximation. So uh, we, we don't guarantee that everything that is, is translated to another language is a, is a perfect match, but we do feel confident that it's about, you know, 85, 90% of a match. And we know that we have many, many of our partners working um, in other languages. And so we've made the website available in, um, in those seven languages. And um, if there are requests for additional languages, we can review those um, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I'll scroll down and I'll also um, uh, show you that you can also change the language on any page at the bottom left um, portion of the website in the yellow footer bar. So every page on the website, top right and bottom left, you can change the language. All right. So um, jumping right in. So this, like I said, is the home page. And um, you'll notice that search capabilities are front and center. Um, this is the, the primary landing page when you um, enter the site. And you'll see even before you get down to the sections that are profiled here, training courses, knowledge base, and community help, we have a search bar. And that's because we recognize, we recognize that, um, that visitors to the website may not know where the content that they're looking for lives. And that's fine. We don't assume that you'll know uh, where, to, where to go and where to look for maybe something that you're curious about. And so instead, we have these search bars all over the website. Um, and so we encourage you um, to, if you know um, where, uh, where to find something that you just search for it, just like Google. Um, so I'm going to search here on the, um, on the homepage. I want to learn about um, uh, login, login credentials, let's say. And you'll start to see that some of the login credential mentions are, are popping up here. And so if, I, um, if any of these meets my needs, I can, um, I can uh, check them out uh, immediately or I can click enter and, um, and then I've got the search results for, uh, for that uh, item. So I'm gonna go back to the homepage. So that's the, if you're searching from the homepage, you search the entire website. When you go into one of the website sections, now the search bar is just for that section. So now I'm only searching in the training section. If I click on knowledge base, I'm only clicking in the knowledge base section. Uh, and community help, when I go to the search bar there, I'm only searching in the community help section. What are these different sections? Let's go over that very quickly. Um, uh, the content that lives in our training course section uh, is, uh, is a repository of Cadasta's training materials. Uh, it's really important to remember that it's a, that it's, it really is, its primary function is as, as a repository um, and that it's not an, a, a full e-learning um, uh, system. So it's not a self-guided automated um, training course that anyone can just come in, sign up for, take, and then be uh, certified to, uh, to use Cadasta's tools. This is a repository of our materials and we'll walk through what some of that looks like here in a minute. Um, so that's the training course section. The knowledge base section of the new website is, uh, it's really a how-to section for technical questions and, um, and actions that you can do on the Cadasta platform. So, Knowledge base is really how to. 
um, new and existing materials on Cadasta software, Cadasta and Esri software, as you see here. And again, as Esri or ESRI is our, um, is our technology provider. And then community help. Community help is the discussion forum and message board function of this website. Um, and as you see here, it's the best place to ask questions and look for answers. And we will, um, we will walk through uh, how that section of the website functions um, and can be used here in a minute. Um, I don't see that we have any questions so far. Just a reminder, you are welcome using the Q&A uh, box to, to enter in your questions at any time. We will, um, we will systematically work through the questions and provide answers at the end of the webinar. Um, all right, so diving into the training course section, um, you will see here that we have five training course modules um, that are currently available. Um, there's an introduction to Cadasta and land rights, GIS overview and mapping module, technology overview and setup, data collection, and data analysis, and data visualization. And you'll see that in each of these modules, we have um, divided the materials up into participant materials and trainer materials. So that just makes it easier if you are, um, are the trainer for one of these modules, you come in and all of the materials you need will be in the trainer folder. Let's click on that and show you what that looks like. So this is just a, a simple list of all of the trainer materials in the uh, introduction to Cadasta and land rights module. Those are the trainer materials and these are the participant materials. There's actually not very many in the introduction um, because it's mostly guided activities that the trainers are leading. Um, you can also, uh, if you don't want to click on the, uh, the folder icons right from the uh, training landing page, you can go into each module and, um, and also um, access the folders and their contents um, from uh, each module's page as well. Um, let's go in and I'm going to go back to the training uh, landing page and I'm going to show you some of the brand new content. So this content was not available online uh, before we launched the website two weeks ago. Um, first and foremost, um, some of the training videos. Um, so I've clicked on the data analysis and data visualization module videos and external resources. And you'll see that on this page, so I clicked on uh, the, the videos and external resources link from the training landing page for this module. And I see that I've got a um, how to create a web maps video. Uh, these are YouTube embed videos, and then also creating and using dashboards. So never before has Canasta published its own um, training videos. And these are great resources um, if you have already been to one of our trainings or if you are uh, uh, scheduled for a training and you want to uh, be the star student and know what's coming ahead of time, you can come into um, this, uh, the website, look at the training videos and already know what's coming and already be practicing um, how to do some of these um, uh, features and um, activities yourself using these brand new training videos. Um, and so further on down the page, there are additional Canasta resources for this topic. Again, we are in the data analysis and data visualization training module. So all of the Canasta resources on this page pertain to data analysis and data visualization. And then also we have the, um, the technology providers resources as well. These are, um, these are the resources that, that we use sometimes um, when learning how to do something or, um, or uh, supporting our partners um, going step-by-step step through a um, process using our technology. So the new videos are um, a really exciting feature of the website. Um, 
and are available in the training section. I can also search for them. So we just looked at the web map video. I could search web map video here when I go to training. If I don't know where it lives, ooh, we need to improve our um, search capabilities. Let's see if I can just do a video. All right, here we go. So now you see all of the websites, uh, website pages with videos. We will update our, our search features so that you can search for uh, different videos and find them right away. All right. Uh, the next new content type in the training materials are um, quizzes, um, which I think are really exciting. Quizzes are given to participants, so they're in all of the participant materials folders. We're going to look at a quiz um, in the uh, data analysis and data visualization module. Since we're here, we'll go to part B quiz here. And then we'll see that um, we have a 10 question uh, quiz after, uh, after training on web maps and dashboards has been provided um, either virtually or in a, uh, an in-person setting. And so just a short questionnaire, um, the trainer has the answer key. Um, so that's in the trainer folder, not in the participant folder. But uh, this is the participant quiz. And if you um, have come online and found this, but you're hosting or your training is in person, all you have to do to make this a, um, a printout is, um, is print a page. So I hit control P on my, um, on my keyboard and I can um, print this save it as a PDF or print it to my local printer. And then I can make several copies of it and then hand it out to my training class for them to complete. Um, very quickly, and I think that you've, you've seen this already, um, also new material in the training course section of the website are the um, module, training module syllabus uh, uh, pages. So that has the learning objectives and the training agenda for every training module that is newly available on this website. Uh, and then also training handouts. Um, so you'll notice here, let's go, I'm gonna go to the data collection uh, training module and um, and show you one of the handouts. So the part B handout for, um, for the data collection training module is a step-by-step -step instruction of how to download the, the, the data collection app, uh, how to log in, and then how to download the imagery and survey that uh, instrument or uh, form that you need. And they're step-by-step -step instructions numbered one, two, three, four with uh, photos so that you can very easy, very easily follow along. So this is a great follow up um, to um, an in-person training class where the, the trainer is presenting how to do these to all of the participants. They have this as a handout after the presentation, everyone gets the handout. And when you go home, you have a very easy reference for how to um, perform the actions on your own. Wonderful. I am going to move on now to the knowledge base section of the website. And um, this is a, um, like I said, this is the how to section um, of the website. So maybe, um, maybe we didn't cover something in training or maybe uh, it was just a casual mention during training and I want to find out more about, um, about a specific uh, activity when I'm using the Canasta platform. I'm coming to this website and I go to the knowledge base section and I can find step-by-step how-to instructions on how to do some of the most frequently asked or the, the frequently asked questions that the Canasta team receives. Um, so you'll see things like there, like this how to add a layer to an ArcGIS 
ArcGIS online um, map, how to add a feature layer to a collector map, creating an online map and introductions. Uh, today, I want to search for um, uh, my example that I want to show you is let's say that uh, we've collected data using the um, the mobile device on a um, on a parcel um, in our community, and now we need to edit the parcel boundaries. And so the parcel, um, when it's captured in the GIS, is called a polygon. And so I will. Um, ooh, here we go. I'll type in polygon in the search feature, and sure enough, editing polygon vertices, that's the signs, uh, pops up here. And so I'm coming in and I'm looking, and this is exactly what I need. I need to edit something that was collected out in the field because it was captured a little bit incorrectly. Um, and so I see here there's step by step instructions one, two, three, four, five, six. There are screenshots showing me how to do it. And, uh, and it's as simple as that. Um, so again, everything in the knowledge base section of the website is, uh, is a step-by-step -step instruction with screenshots. You can search like we did using the search bar here, or if you are just browsing, you may look at um, some of the major headings. So we have uh, how to articles grouped in categories such as getting started, adding data, editing the map, editing data, uh, sharing results and advanced options. What if I search the knowledge base section and I don't find what I'm looking for? Well, we have an answer for that and the answer is the community help section of the website. And so, like I said earlier, the community help section of the website is the, the best place to ask, get, and, um, and contribute to answers from um, staff and from your other users. And so the community help section operates very much like a community forum or a message board. Uh, questions are posted and then they are um, answered and you create threads that, um, that continue the dialogue. Um, you can um, search using the search bar like we've done with the training section and the knowledge base section of the website. Or you can browse um, the, uh, the message board and right now it looks like the, uh, the message board view is based on um, activity. Um, but I can also, if I click on order by, I can order by new. So the newest posts are showing up on top. I can also sort by number of views, views right here, um, which is going to show me the most popular um, uh, questions that have been posed on the, um, on the community help board. And you'll see downloading, um, a bulk downloading of survey one, two, three attachments uh, is, is the top answer. But then using offline imagery during data collection, we, I'm not surprised that this is a, is, is a popular post because um, a lot of questions, we get a lot of questions around using uh, the smartphone uh, applications when you don't have internet uh, or Wi-Fi capability. And so how do you make sure that you still have access to the aerial maps, the offline imagery, we call it during data collection, when you are not connected to the internet? And if we click on the question here, you'll see, uh, you know, simple question, how do I use the imagery when collecting a survey? No mobile service. And then there's an answer. Uh, take a look at the Esri resource, use offline base maps. And uh, if we click on here, you're going to see that we're brought to a resource um, by the technology provider that shows us how we can, uh, how we can do that. Uh, also, a, a number of the posts link back to content on the Cadasta Training and Support Center website. 
So let's go back to the community help um, section and I wanna show you how uh, you as a user can ask a question. Maybe I've got a question about um, uh, editing, a, a, editing a survey question. Um, and I didn't, I looked um, in the knowledge base section and I've looked in um, the other user uh, submitted questions in community help and I just can't find an answer. And so I'm going to pose a question myself. And so the simple, just click on ask a question and um, I can choose a category, although it's not required. Let's see, I, am I, I have a question about editing the survey. And so let's say maybe it's about adding data. I want to edit my survey. Is it possible? Um, and you'll notice that it even suggests questions that may be similar here. I, I breezed right through that, but let me type this again. And so the system is going to search for similar questions. And my typing is not very good today, but uh, so the title is maybe my question and then I give some detail here. Um, I have done two days of surveys in the field and uh, I discovered that um, one of my survey questions and responses need to be changed. How do I do this? Uh, you can do private uh, questions, but uh, we are encouraging everyone to um, pose public questions. Um, you can tag them. So let's say um, survey. Yep, survey, data collection, and uh, let's, yeah, survey one, two, three is, is, is the, the name of the app. And so let's put that in there as well. Let's put my name, Tony P, and my email address. So I'll just do Tony P at Vasta. And then I submit the question. Um, so when I submit a question, um, I'll get a message saying that um, the, uh, the system is creating an account for me. So um, when I, when I um, create a question, yep, you'll see no permission. So I, uh, when I submit my first question, I'm actually creating a user account for myself. Um, and so I can log back in and see the response. And then now I can engage with others um, on the website to, um, to post and comment on their pages as well. And let me show you what that looks like here. I need to switch to another screen very quickly here. Um, yes, okay, so I have logged in to the um, to the training and support center website. Um, and I'm going to go to the community help. And uh, you'll see that uh, I have moderator access. And so I am looking at, uh, is it possible to, so I'm seeing the, the question that I just submitted um, on the front end. Um, but on the back end, uh, now that I have user access, I can comment on and you all will be able to comment on others' posts once you submit your first question and once you have uh, user uh, login and access to the website. And so there is um, uh, a common question that we receive. Uh, does Cadasta have any standard or required questions? Um, do we, we get a lot of questions from partners 
um, about their surveys and Cadasta does have a, a set of about six questions that all of our partners have to um, um, include in their surveys. And so maybe um, uh, let's pretend, for example, that uh, I'm not Tony today, but that I'm a Cadasta partner and I'm coming to the website and I see that, um, that a partner, uh, another user, maybe in a different country has asked this question uh, and I know the answer. Uh, I've been working with Cadasta for a year now and we had this come up for our survey and, um, and I want to engage in a, in a partner to partner or peer to peer discussion. And so I'm going to come on here and I'm going to say, let's, um, let's put this, this woman, Erica has asked this question and, um, I'm going to say, you know, hi, Erica, uh, I'm Tony. Uh, I had this question. Uh, uh, let's say I'm Tony could ask the partner for one year. Now we had this come up. And uh, there were six questions we needed to ask uh, for, um, you know, cadastro requirements, which are spelled out in our partnership agreements, um, if, you, um, if you aren't aware. Um, and then maybe, um, uh, maybe I'm offering Erica some assistance uh, even there were six questions. Maybe um, here's a link to um, to my survey, or uh, you know my website with the um, uh, uh, let's say survey results. Maybe survey results dashboard, and then I can hyperlink www help. Uh, something like that. And so you as a user of the website and a user of Cadasta's platform can engage and dialogue with other folks. And um, we really want to encourage this because um, while the Cadasta team, we like, to, we like to think or we like to believe that we have most or, or all of the answers, Partner experiences are very um, relevant and important. And so sometimes the learning isn't best when it comes from uh, the Cadasta team down to you as a partner, but sometimes the best way to, to, to gain knowledge is, to, um, is for two partners to, uh, to link up and to, to talk with one another and to share lessons learned. So that's what this community help section of the website is designed to do. Um, very quickly, just want to um, uh, remind folks um, about the language capabilities at the top, uh, top right and bottom left of every page. You'll have seven language options. And, um, and on every page, um, there is the search feature capability. So you don't have to know where content lives in order to, um, to find it on the website. With that, I want to, um, I want to give another poll. Um, we've been going through the website for about uh, 30 minutes now, and I think I've gotten a little bit carried away. Uh, and so I want to know, um, based on what you've seen, which feature um, would you anticipate using the most as a Cadasta platform user? We've got three choices. They're the main sections of the website. We've got training courses, knowledge base, and community help. And I see the responses are coming in. It's great. Give it about 20 more seconds. All right, only about half of the web, web webinar participants have voted. Oh, here we got some more coming in. Now we're at two thirds. Wonderful. All right, I'm gonna close it in five seconds. Get your last votes in, five, 
four, three, two, one. All right, we had, uh, so 75% of you said that you are, um, that you're gonna use the training course material. That's fantastic. Um, that is content that we've never, it's, it's brand new content or content that's never been um, um, publicly available on a website. So great to see so many of you wanting to use that right away. And uh, it's reinforcing to know that, um, that you that putting that content on a website is of interest to you all so we're definitely meeting that need uh looks like 25 percent of you are uh anticipate using the knowledge base section that's a good amount and then uh nobody actually is saying community help so that's good um that's interesting feedback for me to to know about and um i will be will be taking that as a team and, um, and learning from that as a response that you're maybe more interested in some of the other content, but we'll also look for ways that community help can be more helpful to you um, since it seems like it's not um, maybe the most um, interest, uh, most of interest part of the Cadasta uh, training and support center currently. Um, that said, let's begin the Q&A section of the session. Um, I don't know if there are any questions in the, um, in the chat feature yet, but um, now is the time for Q&A. You can use the, the Q&A box um, to pose your questions and we'll take the, the, the remaining 10 minutes of the webinar to answer your questions. We have a quiet group here today. Ah, we have, um, okay, so the question was the chat box was disabled um if the chat box is disabled we are coming we are able to see your questions um through the q a box so please um feel free to use the uh the q a feature to uh to pose your questions instead of the chat box um uh so we did that one uh and there's a question uh about do we require an organizational account to use survey one two three um, and um, uh, so uh, the accounts that you use uh, or that you gain access to survey one, two, three are um, obtained through a partnership with Cadasta. Um, Cadasta has an organizational account with uh, the technology provider, which is, um, which is ESRI, uh, E-S-R-I. And so um, through your partnership with Cadasta, you gain access to the um, to the mobile application, which is Survey One Two Three, as you um, response. Um, uh, so I hope that answers that question. Basically, the short answer is become a Cadasta partner, um, go through the partnership process, and um, and when you sign on the dotted line of that partnership agreement, you um, you then uh, uh, gain access to Survey One Two Three and to um, the ArcGIS platform um, or the Cadasta platform um, uh, as, as a Cadasta partner. So, um, so you, don't, um, you are not required to obtain that on your own. You get that through partnership with Cadasta. Uh, so I'll do that, okay. Um, how long does it take to get a response back in community help? That's a great question. Um, we are still learning um, about that, but um, uh, right now our team is going in um, on uh, multiple times a week to monitor the questions, both to post uh, and screen new questions that come in. Just because you submit a question doesn't mean it automatically gets posted. Uh, we have to screen for profanity or in inappropriate comments, um, you know, chat bots, et cetera. But, um, uh, qu new questions are posted and, and answers are given to existing questions multiple times a week. Um, and we only anticipate that when the community help section is used more and more that the, um, that the response time gets shorter and shorter and shorter. So the more engagement um, from 
uh, users, the, uh, the more dynamic and the more, um, uh, the more useful and, and quick of a spot that will be um, for answers. So great question on that. Um, Jason, love this training. So difficult to find a concise curriculum. Um, thank you. Uh, our team, uh, just a shout out to the Cadasta team. Um, we created this new set of curriculum uh, and curriculum materials essentially from scratch when uh, we were all sent to lockdown um, back in March of this year due to coronavirus. And so it has been a long, uh, a long and intense effort by, um, you know, almost a, a dozen of us on the Cadasta team to um, collectively decide what uh, curriculum needs to look like and then also um, uh, to create the materials that support that curriculum. And so um, I really appreciate your uh, feedback and I will be passing that on to our team um, later today as we meet as a program team. So, so thank you. And, and I would also welcome um, any feedback that you have on that curriculum. Um, you can submit that through the user community um, as, a, as a message board post, um, or also you're welcome to, um, to message us um, at Cadasta if you have our email addresses. And uh, I'm happy to give my, um, my email address uh, uh, in the chat window. Madeline, if you could maybe type that in um, just for folks. Uh, tpscovi at cadasta.org is my uh, email address. My last name is a little complicated. Um, so, <laughs> so be careful in spelling that out. Uh, a question about more training and support like this in the future. Um, uh, this website is, is a live website. Um, you can access it. You don't have to, um, you, you don't need the webinar uh, to, uh, as the reason to access the website, you can, you can access help.cadasta.org uh, at any time, whenever you want. And if you are not finding things that you are hoping or you were thinking that should be on the, the training and support website, propose them to us on the user, uh, on the, in the user community, the community help section. Um, if you are specifically looking for um, targeted training and targeted support for your organization. Um, if you're a current partner, reach out to your program specialist and, uh, and request more training or, or a, a technical support session. Uh, if you're not one of our partners, you should know that by becoming a Canasta partner, you get access to um, um, virtual training and virtual technical support from our team automatically. Um, so if you're not a partner already, the um, sessions like this that go into more detail, that walk you through how to use the survey apps, how to do data analysis and create maps and um, analysis dashboards, that is all part of the training that our team offers to all of our partners. And those do happen either in one-on-one -on -one or group sessions. And so there absolutely is the opportunity for more training and support. Um, uh, in the future. We had a question, so thanks for that question, Ibram. Uh, question about um, other GIS uh, apps included in the partnership. Great question. Um, essentially, um, if you know the, um, the, um, the Esri technology solutions suite, um, you, uh, you'll know that these will sound familiar. You have access to a majority of them or the, the most popular ones um, by, by creating or entering into partnership with Cadasta. Um, so the mobile apps include um, Survey123 and Collector. Um, the online apps in, in ArcGIS Online include everything from um, web maps and um, dashboards to um, hub sites. So those are essentially um, um, uh, what self-contained web pages, essentially, um, that um, combine all of the different types of um, uh, content types that you can create in um, the Esri Technology Solutions Suite. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I'm uh, Experience Builder. 
uh, web apps, also story, uh, story maps. So many, if not um, all of the online um, Esri um, technology solutions are available um, when you enter into partnership with Cadasta. And if some of them aren't, we can always, uh, great, um, um, thank you, Katie, for that, um, for that add on field maps. I was, I, I couldn't remember the brand new one um, that, that combines collector and survey one, two, three. Um, but that's it, field maps. Um, if you know of an Esri solution that um, isn't offered um, or mentioned by our Cadasta team right away, um, you can mention that to us and we can investigate it if it's not something available. We do, I, I, I do wanna, I guess, um, not warn, but, um, but, but give a caveat that um, um, certain features um, uh, in the partnership are free and then more advanced features um, in the technology suite um, do incur some amount of cost. And so there is a basic suite of uh, technology uh, in the package that's, uh, that's free. Um, and those are, you know, I would say what 90% of our partners use. And then for the 10% of our partners that need custom things or they need advanced um, technology solutions, uh, there is a, a small annual cost um, with that. Um, great, we're looking forward to working with you as well. And I'm glad that this was uh, the, um, the, the reason or the, um, the opportunity for us to be introduced. Um, an anonymous uh, question uh, mentioned, once I submit a question in the community, uh, help, a new account is created. Do I have the same credentials if I want to ask more questions? Yes. So once you pose a question and the, uh, the website creates a, um, an account for you, that will be the account that you use in the future to, um, to access the community help features and to um, ask more questions and also to respond to um, other people's questions that you have answers to or you want to add your, um, your comments or your experience to. Great set of questions uh, uh, from, from all of the participants on the webinar and um, we're up against our time. We're just a few minutes over. I do want to thank you for, uh, for joining this webinar um, uh, today and encourage you to check out the, the website features. For those of you, uh, again, the website help.cadasta.org. Um, and those of you who are not current Cadasta partners but participated in this webinar today and you like um, the work that we do and this gave you a window in to see the types of um, technologies and support that we can offer you um, in terms of helping communities and individuals secure land rights, land and resource rights, uh, reach out to, to me or to um, anyone on our team if you have our, um, our, we are happy to um, start a discussion with you about partnerships. Um, thank you, Alejandra, you're very welcome. And uh, we hope to be in touch with everyone um, soon. If, uh, please reach out to us. Thank you again for coming to this webinar. I will lastly say that we did a recording for this. And so uh, we'll be sending out the, uh, the recording to all of the website, uh, the webinar participants, and also folks who registered but weren't able to attend today. Thank you so much and have a good day.